Good afternoon to you, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 23rd of October, 2015. Nothing to talk about in the Atlantic per se. Obviously, the big story is what's going on in the Southeast Pacific with historic, catastrophic Hurricane Patricia, uh, record pressure, 879 millibars, and the winds 200 miles per hour. Luckily, and I... <laughs> Of all the things you can say about this, luckily, those winds are located around a very small area around the eye. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. I want to show you uh, what the latest advisory information is literally coming out as I record this video. 18.2 north, 105.3 west is the center of that very small eye. There's the pressure, 879 millibars, 200 miles per hour maximum sustained winds and the hurricane hunters in there I'm going to show you a picture in just a minute of the radar that they took unfortunately there does not appear to be any functioning radar uh, coastal radar in the area so that's a big problem we really can't uh, monitor this via coastal uh, weather radar um, trying to see where they have the hurricane force winds extending out all right, here we go. Maximum sustained winds remain near 200 miles per hour, uh, Category 5, etc. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 35 miles from the center, and the tropical storm force winds 175 miles. So let's talk about that just for a minute. This is very important, especially for people who still have time to get in touch with anybody in the region. This is not the entire extent of 200 mile per hour winds. What we're looking at is the central dense overcast right in here. That's the round circular part uh, of the hurricane. And then of course there's the eye in the middle and surrounding that eye. In fact, let's go to a still image. I think that'll make it a lot easier to illustrate what I want to show here. So we have the central dense overcast uh, or CDO in here, this intense upward motion of convective activity pressing against the uh, stratosphere. I mean, it's way up there, probably 40, 45, 50,000 feet. And then around this is the core of the hurricane right here. And it's very small, and that is the best news that we can take out of this. Uh, we are not looking at a 200 mile wide, or a 100 mile wide, or a 50 mile wide, 200 mile per hour hurricane. That would be, um, you know, unearthly, something you would see on another planet. Uh, luckily, we rarely get those kinds of events here on Earth. However, the hurricane force winds do extend out about 35 miles from the center. So something like that, probably. It's not this, uh, and it's certainly not this entire area. Uh, and to give you perspective, this is the radar image that just got transmitted a short while ago from the NOAA hurricane research plane that's out there. And here is the perfectly defined eye in fact, I can zoom in on this and show you a lot better, uh, hopefully, here. Come on, bear with me. Let's go. And this gives you an idea of where it's headed, as well as the shape and, and where the worst winds are. So right around the core is where the worst winds are. Uh, tropical storm force winds around that, and then to a lesser extent, gale force winds from there. This is the worst part of the hurricane right here. It's a fairly small area and that is headed generally in this direction uh, maybe a little bit more of a wobble towards the east with time but we're not talking about a large area of coastline that is going to experience these extreme winds and if we look at this map uh, of the coast of Mexico we see the bay here in Manzanillo that's a bad area for this to come in uh, if it did something like this then that storm surge in the right front quadrant would be right in there unfortunately uh, but Looking at the scale, uh, this is only about 10 miles right here. So the bay is almost 10 miles across, and the hurricane force winds extend out only 35 miles, and so that's one, two, three, and some change. So this is the extent of the entire hurricane force wind area, not 200 miles per hour. That's only going to be in an area very, very close to that eye, and it just depends on where that makes landfall. So if it comes in the center crossing the coast here, then your 200 mile per hour wind, uh, 150 and up, is gonna be confined to an area about like that. 
and then as you spread out from there it's going to be much less. The gradient of pressure with this system, the change in air pressure over distance is incredible. So the wind is literally focused around a very small area and I bring that into the, the making the most about that because luckily uh, this isn't going to come in and bring 200 mile per hour winds to this entire coastline here. That would be just a horrible disaster for all of these people and so I'm trying to bring you a, a, a realistic look at it while at the same time you know not underestimating what's going to be happening here um, because it is going to be really bad for whoever gets this but it's not a giant hurricane with those winds extending out 50 or 100 miles uh, and even the storm surge you can tell here by this Google map uh, we call this the bathymetry or the uh, shape of the offshore uh, geography and geology here that's called bathymetry and it slopes off really fast here. It gets very deep just offshore. So you're going to have pretty big waves coming in, but the radius of maximum winds, again, around this satellite picture or the radar picture here, those radius of maximum winds not going to be able to push a tremendous amount of seawater ahead of this onshore to flood a giant area like Hurricane Katrina, whose hurricane force winds extended out 90 to 105 miles from its center. So that was a much larger area of 100, 150, almost 200 mile per hour gust in Katrina pushing seawater towards the coast. So as bad as this is, it's going to be confined to this fairly small area and it's all going to depend on where that comes ashore. Is it in the Manzanillo area proper? Uh, hard to say. As I said, unfortunately, there is no coastal radar in the region, so we're not going to be able to monitor this except by visible satellite pictures. And if we go back and look at that visible shot again, uh, one good thing about this, too, notice the timestamp on here, um, about 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern time. This will make landfall uh, before it gets dark. And at least the people there will have the gift of light, so to speak, and not have to deal with this terror at night. Uh, that would be absolutely just, I don't know how you would survive something like that mentally later on, not being able to see the hellish winds that are being brought upon you if you're in the path of this storm, this giant uh, hurricane in terms of its wind speed. It is a giant in terms of its history of making pressure. Luckily, uh, emphasizing again, it's fairly small in size and that is the one thing to take away from this. Now, after it makes landfall, we have a, a huge problem inland over the Mexican high terrain and then spreading into Texas. There's a frontal boundary draped across the region and it's very complex as to what happens next. This is the GFS or Global Forecast System computer model showing the next uh, couple of days here. This is valid uh, tomorrow morning. So this is 24 hours after landfall. Um, Patricia will dissipate very quickly the low level center over the high terrain of Mexico but then the mid and upper level energy should come on up across Mexico towards the Gulf of Mexico proper uh, on the east part here uh, east of Texas and as we go out into time here this is 24 hours now we're looking at 36 hours out and here's some of that energy coming in forming perhaps another low pressure area at the surface with some of this remnant energy from Patricia. So folks in the coastal bend of Texas and then inland, very heavy rain, coastal flood problems with onshore flow at the times of high tide. We are approaching another what we call supermoon, uh, very extra high tide on top of the astronomical high tides that we normally have. They're gonna be even higher because we're headed towards um, what's called a supermoon where it's just a little bit closer to the Earth in its orbit, what we call perigee. Uh, perigee and spring tide, uh, some people call it the king tide, and so that's going to add a couple of extra feet of water flooding areas like Bolivar Peninsula down towards Surfside and the usual flood prone areas in the coastal parts of Texas. Moving on out to Sunday morning, uh, these bullseyes here of precipitation indicating the potential for very heavy rain along the coast of Texas with that strong and persistent onshore flow piling the water up in that area creating potentially some serious problems. And then as we move on out into time, 
Sunday night, that uh, energy and the low pressure area hangs around. Notice that it has sort of this comma shape to it. Uh, it's not bundled and circular like we see with Patricia. So this is more non-tropical in nature, uh, almost like a hybrid type storm. It's over very warm water, has some tropical characteristics, but the wind field fairly spread out and it has almost frontal characteristics to it. Um, nevertheless, the effects it's still going to be windy, still going to have heavy rain, trees down occasionally in some areas, and the threat of coastal flooding. Finally, by Monday morning at uh, basically rush hour Houston time, uh, possibly very heavy rain spreading into Louisiana and Mississippi. And then again, you still have this sort of comma shape to the system. And beyond Monday, this energy could spread up into the Mississippi Valley, creating the potential for severe weather something we'll have to talk about later and uh, definitely want to keep a monitor on uh, through the weather service, the weather.gov and the Storm Prediction Center. So after this unbelievable hurricane makes landfall in Mexico, again that energy should come across, the mid and upper level energy survives and then we get this low pressure developing in the Gulf, very heavy rain for parts of Texas, coastal flooding issues and as a result we see numerous flash flood watches in effect for many many counties in Texas already seeing on the radar some rain starting to fall not directly associated with uh, the moisture from Patricia just yet uh, that is coming let me go back there's a different shot I want to show you full resolution right there uh, and all of this precip will be increasing over time uh, right now this is associated with this frontal boundary stuck up here and this upper level low pressure energy tapping that deep moisture coming out of the Gulf itself, and then we will watch the remnants of Patricia cutting across, forming another low pressure area. So very complex, uh, very dangerous for Mexico, uh, a nuisance too dangerous, especially if you don't use common sense in Texas, and kind of everything in between. So uh, historic day for hurricane intensity, records, research, the Air Force, the NOAA planes, they all working together to provide this information so hats off to the men and women not only flying in the air but those that are on the ground at the various forecast centers keeping track of this lethal hurricane down in the southeast Pacific. I am going to be heading to Houston tomorrow morning to set out uh, some live cameras to study the coastal uh, effects of this storm that's developing presumably in the Gulf Coastal waters. We'll be streaming that live on our Ustream channels I'll be sure to post the links to that on HurricaneTrack.com and of course our, shows, our social media feeds as well. And um, I'll be posting what I can on Twitter from here on out, basically the next six to ten hours. It's all about where it makes landfall and who's in the way and who's not. Uh, and then the rest we'll just have to wait and see as reports come out from the region as to what the damage is. But we'll certainly be hoping for the best for the people down there. But remember, hope itself is not a planning tool. You have to be prepared, and hopefully the people down there, there I use that word hopefully, uh, did prepare and are out of the way of this unbelievable historic hurricane. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks as always for tuning in, and I'll have more from the road as I head to Texas tomorrow.